What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. As you guys know, Massar is looming on the horizon. We had a very small patch today, but a monumental one, mainly because Basar is here to stay. Now for those of you guys who've seen the shop, you guys know there's some powerful artifacts in there. I myself am looking for Abyssal Crown, but when we look at this guys, Basar is going to have a pretty significant impact on your box. So for those of you guys out there who said implicitly in the comments that you guys are like, hey, I'm not doing PvP, I don't care about so I'm not pulling, that's fine. But for everybody else, like I said, that want Lionel Richie, <laughs> Lionel Richie on your team, I wanted to talk to you guys about some pitfalls and some things that you guys could run into, some problems um, and or benefits that you guys could run into using Basar. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to counter and also build your Basar and the rest of your team so you don't set yourself up in a way that basically causes you to fail. All right, so here's the deal. Um, I to be honest, like I've probably bizarred a lot of your teams. Uh, if you're fighting, if we're fighting in Guild Wars, chances are I'm probably using Basar in some way, shape, or form in your team. Um, and from that, I feel like a big pitfall that a lot of players aren't going to realize until they start to build Basar is that it takes a little bit of finesse to use Basar. And the reason why I say that is because he has a very interesting skill kit. You know, I talked about in the review, I said a while ago that Basar is about to be crazy because he ignores resistance. And when you set him up, he can reduce the enemy's combat readiness and like literally nullify any beneficial effect comms. So make Chloe's, those fallen CCs with the shields and all that stupid stuff and the artifacts and all that nonsense, he literally shuts down. Okay, and which is good, and because of the fact that he reduces the combat readiness by 30%, he sets your team up in a way that kind of significantly reduces your speed requirements in order to run him. So to show you guys case in point, so here I want to showcase kind of what Basar brings to the table. Shouts out to Jaxter1, we're just going to be using your defense as an example here for the people to see, so no hard feelings. But when you look at Basar, his primary role, you know, is to basically strip, block beneficial effects, and set your team up. Now, the way that he works, uh, don't mind Desert Basar here, but once we get to regular Basar, you guys will see what I'm talking about. As I mentioned before, the thing about Desert Joe Basar, or excuse me, or <laughs> regular Basar, is that with the Soul Burn, especially if you guys are running Taga Hell's Ancient Book here, you guys get the extra souls, and so he attacks all enemies with the Sand Magic, dispelling all buffs, and making them unable to be buffed for two turns before decreasing combat readiness by 30%. Now, the kicker here is, I want you guys to really pay attention to this combat readiness. So, the biggest pitfall that I see players run into when using Basar is that they think that just because of the beneficial effect, removal, and the block, they think that that is enough. So, here's the kicker. If you guys are going to be running Basar, you have a few options that you guys can run here. Now, with Basar, you want to make sure that there is a unit that's going to go after Basar, depending how you build Basar. So, if you're going to be running Basar, let's say Tywin, right? If you're running a Basar Tywin team, then you need to make sure that Tywin is within 30% of the speed that Basar is at. So, for the sake of example, if you're running a 100 speed Basar, then you need a 70 speed Tywin. Like, obviously, you're not going to run a 70 speed Tywin, but that's just to give you guys a rough example. And then, so when Tywin does his little 30%, then you'll need a unit within, you know, you know, a certain percentage of Tywin to make sure that Tywin goes. Now, it's not going to be as hard to do that, mainly because Basar is also reducing the enemy's combat readiness by 30%. But if you guys are not running with the Solar Burn, it's even more important that you have your team speed tuned. And the big thing about speed tuning a team with Basar is, like I said, you just really want to pay attention to what the percentage is going to be when you reduce or influence the combat readiness. Again, the combat readiness is just this little bar over here on the left hand side. So if you guys will pay attention to my speed tuning here, I got, you know, Aramitha Spez ready to go, even if Basar, you know, doesn't go, because in this case, my Basar is actually kind of slow. He's only like 230, uh, 220 or 230 or something like that. But let's say if you guys opted to run for a super fast Basar, um, that's something that you guys really want to be aware of. Now, other ways that you you guys can run Basar is after the strip if you guys are running with like a super crazy cleave comp like a double cleave comp if you guys are running Basar into Oxlots then Oxlots can raise you know like your J Kisei or you know whatever that situation is now keep in mind if you're using your Basar as a lead-in meaning he's the one that's going to be leading in and setting your team up 
then you're going to need to make sure that you have him as fast as possible. Now, some other pitfalls that you could run into with your Basar is the fact that Lilius is a super duper hard counter to Basar, especially if your Basar is not being ran on Oath Key. And Oath Key is a viable option you can run on your Basar to ensure that he never misses. But, big but here, it also closes down some options depending on what type of team comp you're running. So if you're running a Mage Cleave comp, then that might not be an issue. But if Basar is the only mage on your team, then that can kind of shut your team comp down. But again, the beauty of Basar is the beneficial effect block. So in situations where you're up against a Fallen CC, Crimson Armin, Maid Chloe, pretty much anything that, that gives harmful effects, you can pretty much shut that down. So in this situation, we're just going to spaz here. I'm going to take out this Charles. I try to look at positioning. If you guys are looking at running a similar team like this, I try to look at, you know, how fast particular heroes are. So I know who to nuke, who not to nuke, when to nuke, how to nuke, you know, etc. Right. So in this situation, um, What's her face is going to go, Fallen CC is going to go, but because of Basar here, it's not really going to matter because we got the block beneficial effect. So now we could try to go for the stun on Ruel here because Ruel is going to go and she's going to invince her anyway unless we happen to kill her. So that was a waste, unfortunately, but again, because the way the Basar is set up, it allows us to kind of do our thing because Fallen CC then used her as three, but it was a waste because now she can't block. She also cannot apply the shield um, that Fallen CC normally applies every time she gets a turn due to her passive because of the Benny effect block that um, Basar brings. And Basar, because of that utility, it makes him really, really, really strong. But like I said, there are some super duper hard counters to Basar. And I feel like Smile Gator Super Creative kind of knew what was going to happen. So they positioned this in a way that... <laughs> That they started releasing, they just like, yo, Basar's coming this week, so we need to position like a lot of fire units, right, in order to counter, and that's what it seems like they're actually doing. So I wouldn't really be surprised at all, literally, if like Strays was fire, because we already know Kyrick's going to be fire, right? So Kyrick's going to be fire, Strays will probably be fire as well, and then with that, like, it, it kind of opens up some comps. So in terms of building for Basar, you're going to want to make sure your Basar is as fast as possible. Your Basar is going to want to be as fast as possible if you guys are going to be positioning first because you want him to go. You want him to kind of do his thing. You want him to be in a situation where he's going to go. Uh, effectiveness can be viable build on him if you want to build effectiveness. However, if you're not opting for the effectiveness, then you're definitely going to want to invest in a Target Hell's Ancient Book so you guys can capitalize um, on the extra soul burn to ignore resistance. But like if you guys build your Basar effectively, like there's literally like no like team comp per se that can withstand you as long as they're not faster than you. But in terms of countering Basar, and again we'll get into this in a second when we start looking at teams, um, Lilius is a hard counter. Pretty much any type of fire unit that is tanky could be a hard counter to him. If you happen to be if you happen to be slower than the enemy team then you could easily get countered as well. Uh, so that's something as well that you guys really have to take into consideration when you guys are looking at your team composition. Other hard counters to Basar include heroes like Sage Bell and Suzanne. So for those of you guys who still have Sage Bell, Sage Bell, especially if you guys are running a super fast Sage Bell, like a 240, 250, 260, 270 Sage, that's a hero that can hard counter Basar mainly because if Basar uses his S3, reduces the combat readiness, gets a turn, Sage Bell will then go back up anyway. And then if your team is not fast enough or if you don't have a speed tune, whatever, or something goes wrong, Sage Bell is most likely going to get a turn. And if you're not running, let's say, a Fallen CC or like double buffs on your team, a Sage, uh, the Sage Bell and Suzanne is probably we're going to lock your team down. So Sage Bell is a hard counter to, to uh, Basar as well. Sage Bell, if I'm using running a Basar comp, is probably the only team comp I'm not going to attack. Just a heads up. Also, uh, like I said, the way to get around Lilius is if you guys are going to be running Oath Key on your Basar. But outside of that, like Lilius is a hard one because it really just depends on her speed positioning as well. So like granted, you could RNG it. And if you like, you know, land the, the pushback on Lilius and Lilius teams aren't really a threat either. If I could just find my damn Lilius, I don't even <laughs> I don't even know if she's built anymore. All right. So uh, but Lilius here is a super hard counter to Basar because if she goes and you're again this is why it's so important that your team is speed tuned meaning that everybody goes in the order that they're supposed to go in if Lilius then goes and cleanses and pushes your team back and then so she'll cleanse the enemy team essentially right 
And then if their team is speed tuned, then you're going to be toast as well. So that's some things that you guys can think about. If you guys are thinking about countering Basar teams with Lilius, you have to really slow down and pay attention to how fast Lilius is in whatever arena rank you're in. So if you notice that in your arena rank, if you're in champ uh, five or if you're in high challenger or master or whatever, and you notice that all the Basars in that rank are 240, then you want to position in a way that your Lilius is just a little bit slower than the Bissar. So if that Bissar is 240, then your Lilius would be like 220 or 230, right? So if he misses, but, you know, he hits the rest of your team, then Lilius goes, boom, does her thing, cleanses your team, and then your team is ready to go, especially if you guys are running like a turn two offense, right? So that's something that you guys can look at. If you guys make the mistake of building Lilius as a counter for Bissar, but you make her too fast, then that could potentially spoil your entire team comp, especially if the enemy team is on immunity and you can't affect them with the pushback because then you're just basically wasting the S3. Now, in this situation where you're running Lilius with like Fallen CC as like a triple cleave with like Arbiter Vildred, then of course that's not going to matter. But um, in any other situation, that's something that you guys want to look at. But in terms of countering regular Bassar, the thing you want to look at is you want to really pay attention to uh, what you guys are going to be dealing with in any arena format or PvP format, meaning who are you fighting, you know, what are you up against, what could hurt you, what could help you, and really make that happen. Again, speed tuning your team is gonna be so, so incredibly important to make sure that your team goes in the correct order and that your heroes don't get skipped. If you get skipped running Basar offense, you die, all right? And then if you guys do do this correctly, you can have a lot of fun with Basar a ton of fun because again he nullifies and like i said since he's going to be everywhere i really wanted to talk about this topic so i can get you guys really thinking about what type of team comps you guys are going to run slow tanky comps aren't usually the most effective against bizarre depending on what they pair bizarre with but like in terms of speed tuning the rest of your team and countering with heroes that you know bizarre will have problems with aka sage bell aka lilius aka any type of fire hero that could potentially put a hole in whatever attempts he's trying to make on your team uh, can be very 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 effective against him but there's literally no buff that i know of that he can't strip other than vigor from ken right uh, but outside of that he can strip everything else he can block immortality he can block everything so like if you got the, you you guys let's say you're running spin and he strips the he puts the benny effect block on the immortality slice out you know what i'm saying so that's something that I really want you guys to think about because in terms of PvP, Basar is just super duper strong. And with this banner, guys, people are pulling for Basar like crazy, dude. Chat's been lighting up. So I wanted to really talk about some hard counters and some mistakes that I want you guys to try to avoid um, when you guys are looking at this. Oh, another quick tip too. If you guys are going to be running Basar, you guys can get away with running Basar as slower, like 220, you know, 220-ish. Uh, just faster than most fallen CCs. So if you guys are in doing arena in like any rank, and like I've even got away with this in like Legend, <laughs> uh, there's some teams that run fallen CC super duper slow, like 220, and they run just like a slower but tankier team. Uh, you can position Basar in a way that you know even though he's still only like 220, he'll still go first and or second. So for instance, like if their fallen CC is faster but the rest of the team is slow, uh, the fallen CC will go S3 and then use Basar, burn it S3, strip the buffs, apply defense break, and then wreck. Like, he's, he's nuts. He's nuts. So, uh, with that, it kind of scares me, too. I feel like there'll probably be some real hard counters to Basar probably coming pretty soon. Because Basar literally is going to be an infection in the meta. Okay? So, uh, with that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy, Damone. Again, just wanted to take a little bit of time, show you guys some stuff in Arena, and really break down Basar so you guys can kind of see him in action and understand that, like, unlike Tywin, he never misses. Okay? He doesn't miss, especially if you're using the Soul Burn. Um, unless, of course, you're up against Element Disadvantage, but... Basar stupid. And if you position your team correctly and you look at the speed between your units and or you pay attention to the th things that can hard counter you while using Basar, I think you guys can get away with murder with this guy. So anyway, thank you guys again for tuning in and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.